I'm going to service the rear brakes on a 2015 CRV front wheel drive. I have the new ceramic pads in both rotors. These are the tools and parts you need to replace the rear brakes on the 2012 to 2016 Honda CRV with front wheel drive. Half inch drive ratchets or a breaker bar, a 13 millimeter socket and two M8 bolts, a 13 millimeter socket and two M8 bolts to press the two rear rotors off, a 14 millimeter socket that's for the either the banjo fitting or now the, the caliper slide bolts for the new calipers, the bolt size changed, 17 millimeter socket for the caliper bracket, 19 millimeter socket for the lug nuts, uh, Phillips screwdriver, small regular screwdriver, 10 millimeter combination wrench for the bleeder valve, 18 millimeter wrench that's also in combination of the, with a 14 for the caliper slide bolts. Optional is a half inch drive impact wrench with an air source. Parts you'll need the two calipers, pads, two rotors, consumables that you'll need, brake cleaner, a couple cans of brake cleaner, at least one jar, one of the large 32 fluid ounce jars of brake fluid. You also need uh, some way to bleed the system. I use a jar and then a piece of vinyl tubing jack up the the car put it on stands and then optional lacquer thinner and engine paint you also want to have some way to, to pry the calipers apart so a pry bar or a large regular screwdriver and then sometimes it's helpful to give it a lug tap in this case a ball peen hammer and the last two items safety glasses for when you're spraying the brake cleaner and work gloves. Start the installation by jacking up the car and putting it on stands. Always always use jack stands even if you're out working under the car like I am today I'm just doing the brakes and always block the front wheels or the opposite wheels of what you have elevated. I'm using a pneumatic impact wrench with a 19 millimeter socket. Now if you're gonna use a breaker bar or a ratchet to break them loose and take them off then make sure you break the lug nuts loose before you jack up the car partially jack up the car take some pressure off break the lug nuts loose jack the car up put it on stands and then take your wheel all the way off i like to take things apart with the pneumatic impact and I put them together by hand with just a regular ratchet. These Honda brake rotors have a Phillips head screw in them. Hit them with a little PB blaster. Hopefully they'll come out easy. They also have this other plug right here that's for adjusting the parking brake. I like to use a bucket to set the caliper on and then also if I'm bleeding the brake by myself you can set the the jar for the brake fluid on the on the bucket and I'll show you that in a minute when I put it back together. The caliper mounting bolts right here are 17 millimeter. The banjo bolt here is 14 millimeter. The caliper slide bolts are 12 millimeter. And then the bleeder valve is uh, 10 millimeter. I want to take this screw off that retains the rotor before I take everything else apart so that it, this 
rotors being held and you can do that by loosening it up a few love taps and then my screwdriver tapping on it and if it's really tight I can tap and turn tap and turn there it's loose already so this one wasn't too bad it came loose but these are being held on they don't have to be real tight so when the wheel sits here it holds that in so it doesn't need to be real tight when you tighten it up and just that tight the wheel will retain it so all it's doing is helping to hold the rotor on before you put the caliper on so there's no need to lock tight it or to uh to really tighten it i'm gonna replace the rotor so i'm gonna pop this rubber cap out Oop, he went inside that's all right i'll get it when i take the rotor off rubber dust cover on the bleeder valve again 12 millimeter caliper slide bolts Seventeen millimeter caliper mounting bolts. I wasn't going to do it, but I think I'm going to replace this caliper. So that 14 millimeter banjo bolt, I should have cracked that before I took the caliper off. Go back and reinstall it if it gives me trouble. Trying not to stress the hose, the brake hose. I really don't want to stress that hose, so I'm going to reinstall the caliper. Some mounting bolts, this finger tight. just enough so I don't have to hold the caliper you really don't want to hang the caliper from the hose or you know put force on the hose and these banjo fittings are all brass a lot of times I have a brass bolt with a hole in it and uh, it doesn't take much to take it off, but you don't want to stress the hose. There we go. There's what the, the bolt looks like. See the little hole in it? So it's got a hole through the shaft. Transmit the fluid into the caliper. And here's what the banjo fitting looks like. These are M8 by 1.25. Um, these are about three quarters of an inch long to I think 20 millimeter or something long. Thirteen millimeter head size. If you impact these, 
make sure you go slow a few turns one side and the other pull it straight off this one's coming right off so it's not needed make sure you use a good quality class 10 or grade 8 bolt metric it's class size so you don't break them off And I'll take them back out and use them on the other side. I like to use a Rubbermaid tote. In this case, I'm just using the, the lid, my Rubbermaid tote. Put it underneath, catch the brake, brake fluid, and the brake clean. Now, you don't want to breathe this uh, brake dust. And, well, of course, you know, if you get it on your fingers be careful wash it off you know especially you don't want to breathe it but this one looks pretty clean already but just a, a soft plastic bristle brush and uh, some brake cleaner let it drip into your Rubbermaid tote now I used to have a, a kitty litter box that was perfect for this it was a little bit bigger than the Rubbermaid tote and it was shorter became old and brittle I dropped a, a caliper into it at one time and uh, of course it broke and then cracked on the bottom didn't retain fluid anymore So uh, some parts I didn't clean very well. This uh, heat shield probably could have used a little more brake cleaner. But uh, I'll let it dry and go do the other side. Bring everything over the device. Get your, where you have your wire brush maybe a little bit of lacquer thinner just bring the whole plate over here where you can put your bolt in the vise and I either just clean it up with a wire brush or if it's really dirty take it to the sandblast cabinet hit it with uh, uh, better than sand media like a glass particle that has sharp edges cleans up really quick depending on the project I'll clean up the, the head it's just a CRV so clean up the bolts so once I've got the bolt clean then you could either clean it up in lacquer thinner if you're gonna paint it or I use uh, I like to use anti-seize these bolts probably come from the factory with a little bit of Loctite on them you can either use a, a Loctite sealer or the high-strength Loctite on these 
just remember when they're wet with either Loctite or an anti-seize that uh, the torque value is going to be higher. So, right? so if you torque them to the normal torque setting, you're going to put more stress on the bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the rest of the bolts. So if you don't want to use an anti-seize, you can use a, a thread locker. This one locks the threads in place that makes it so it's difficult for the bolt or bolt and uh, nut to come off and sometimes requires heat to get off or a lot of uh, extra pressure, a lot of extra torque to get it off to break it loose. So if I want a suspension bolt to not come loose and to be sealed, I use this. I don't really use uh, the medium strength thread locker. I just go use the anti-seize and remember, you know, it gets torqued to a higher torque value when it's wet, either either the motor oil or the anti-seize. And this is a good nickel anti-seize. This is a good nickel anti-seize, so it's the highest temperature. So you can use this on header bolts or uh, exhaust manifold bolts, but I don't use that much of it. It's about twice as much money as the lower cost anti-seize, but uh, I don't use that much of it over the period of a, a year. This can will last me a couple years. And I like to mix it with just a little bit of motor oil so it goes on easier. So I use a good synthetic motor oil. I use my leftover mix synthetic motor oil. So after I do an oil change with synthetic, I drain all my quart cans or five quart jugs into one and then I use that leftover mix for different uses to lube stuff and to add into my anti seize so it goes on a little bit smoother it's easier to apply and I also have a cheap anti seize that I use this cheap anti seize I think is aluminum aluminum mix and that really doesn't make sense because you're putting anti seize on to prevent corrosion right so a nickel nickel to steel or a nickel to aluminum doesn't cause a dissimilar metal corrosion where aluminum on steel will cause a dissimilar metal corrosion so even you're not in the salt or wet it'll still corrode a bolt into an aluminum manifold or header or heads so you want to use anti-seize or a sealer on those threads but it doesn't make sense to use aluminum so i'm not sure if that's actually what this is but this is the the cheapest form of loctite and i'll use this as a corrosion inhibitor and I'll show you that in a minute. The center hub is a good place to use this cheap anti-seize as a corrosion inhibitor. It sticks better than just a regular grease. And if it gets into place where like this, the even though the motor oil is uh, is in it, it'll still dry and it'll form like a film. It does, it does stay wet, so if it's in an area that it can get dust in it, this really isn't in here. It, uh, it will collect dust and dirt. It just acts better than uh, if you were to try to paint this. And you notice the, the hub, you can see the hub in here is already rusted. So I'm not going to attempt to paint that. Paint won't stick to it. And I'm certainly not going to take the time to sandblast uh, a CRV hub. So just a quick coat with a, with a flux brush. And that'll keep it from rusting any more in there. the power stop caliper it's the number for the left side rear came as a kit pads rotors and two calipers comes with the springs the new washers So make sure you always replace the, the washers on your banjo fitting and make sure that you uh, have two of the old washers on the ground. Make sure that uh, 
one of the washers, one of the old washers isn't still on the banjo fitting when you put it back together. Now this was coming with a different bolt. So I had 12 millimeter taking the, the other one off. This one's now 14 millimeter. And it has an 18, 18 millimeter there to hold it. Well, I got three. I got a bonus. I got an extra one. I'm going to leave this run in real time. I was thinking about doing a time lapse, but I don't think I will. Let it run. This one, you simply make sure you got the right orientation. It's got to have springs. Remember springs on the end hold the pads, keep the pads silent. And this one goes in piston side first, and then the other side just pushes in and comes back and just centers it. Once you uh, put the pad in, it'll, it'll retain it. So you put this pad in, put the caliper or the piston side pad in, and we're round, goes to the, the axle hub, round to the axle hub. Right. Okay, anyway. So, and then this one's got the three tongs, goes into the piston, the caliper piston. Typically, you want to go push it in straight, so get the three tangs all lined up, the tips, and then push it in. And that's all there is to it. This uh, high temp anti-seize works good as a lubricant don't use a lot of it it's going to get dusty there and dirty anyway but right there all the slides slide pieces where the pads touch works as a good caliper grease so i'm also going to re-grease it in here these pro stop already came with grease so that's extra let's we'll set that aside i'm going to these came with grease, but I'm going to add a little more grease in here. I hate it when uh, these caliper slides go dry and then your calipers will stick. Greatly reduces your pad life. So there's a little groove right there on this slide bolt. See a little groove right there that that fits into. You got to get that out of there. And take a good amount of see it's already got a little of that synthetic grease on it or whatever that Pro Stop uses. I've found that what comes in those little tubes, let me grab the little tubes. Comes in this little tubes often isn't enough. And I learned uh, several years ago that this high temp anti seize works good for a grease. The object is, by the time my pads are worn out, then uh, there should be this grease should still be wet. That's your goal. Want this? If it's not, like I've seen many calipers, use, a lot of times the bottom one will be dry. I don't know if it takes more heat, it takes more pressure. It'll be dry, and then your caliper sticks. And then, then it won't return, wears out the pads prematurely. So I'm going to do this other one, and then I'll restart the video.
one last thing before I go back to the vehicle. This uh, bleeder valve. Take that and put a little anti-seize on it. Uh, for years to come, I'll be thankful that I did that. There we go. Now it's ready to go back on the vehicle. All right, so here we're at back of the vehicle. First, the the rotor. A little on the rag, a little on the disc. Clean up the back side. Clean up the front side. No big deal if you get a little bit of your fingerprints on it. Just wipe it off with a rag and a little bit of brake cleaner. Now I've got two chances to line up my, my hole here for my screw. I've got one there and one there. So I'm just down a little bit from that stud. So right there. Yep. So I'm just down a little bit from that stud. So down a little bit from the stud. Line up the, the wheel studs, push it on, and the screw feels good, lines were lined right up. Remember, doesn't need a lot of English, put a little bit of anesthes on it so it comes back off in the future. It's captive by the wheel, so it's not going to come out on you. It's just there to hold the the rotor while you're putting the caliper on. Caliper bracket goes back on. Two bolts. First, the outside pad. Then the caliper. I'm pushing that inside pad, the piston side pad, back into the piston, holding it with my thumbs. And then push the slide bolts with my fingers here push them in with my fingers as I'm using my hand to just slide it in line it up and grab a bolt reline it up right here wiggle the caliper a little bit should be just should be able to thread it in easy it's a new bolt new new uh, remanufactured caliper so they should start pretty easy and go most of the way in by hand. And as you're getting in there, you can uh, grab your socket. That's another reason I like to use deep wells when you're, uh, you can turn it with your fingers a little easier. But you just use the socket by yourself when it's a little hard turn the socket easier then you can turn the head of the the screw and this particular setup doesn't have a captive little nut right here which is too bad you got to hold it with a wrench most calipers that has a couple flat spots there and then the caliper holds it right there so you don't need an additional wrench this one you do 
what I said earlier, make sure your banjo fitting is clean, both sides. Make sure it doesn't have a washer on it. Make sure you find both of the old washers are laying on the ground somewhere. In a pinch, you could reuse them, but I wouldn't. It's better not to. A new one comes with two, two uh, new washers. Install one on the bolt. And then install the bolt into the banjo fitting. Throw the other washer on. So again, bolt into the banjo fitting. Then another new washer on the inside line up the fitting to the caliper this one's got an alignment tab on it let me take it back off this one's got this alignment tab on it right here that helps hold it in place so the banjo fitting doesn't rotate otherwise you gotta make sure that the block lines up right with the caliper and uh, keep it in in place so that it's square with the caliper and uh, so you don't cross thread it going in here again this one should thread in pretty easy you know, wiggle the fitting turn it by hand tighten the rest away by hand with a socket Remember this bolt has got a hole through the inside of it. It doesn't require a lot of torque. Just enough to make sure that those two brass washers seal. And remember you can always come back later if, the, if, you, if you check that and it's leaking. Just tighten it up a little bit more. So don't over tighten it now. So before I leave the subject of... Uh, installing the new caliper let me show you something I back up my camera just a little bit so you can see so if I wasn't going to install the caliper if I was going to install or have the rotors turned and I was going to reuse the caliper here's the the old caliper let me take it apart if I can uh, she's stuck a little bit and old pad this is the offending side this one's stuck so it wore out these pads prematurely let me show you the other pad here's the other pad it was down to metal so it ruined that rotor that's the outside pad so remember what I said about the slides and adding extra grease I bet if we took these apart let me see Nope, that one's loose. That one's loose. So both slides are loose, but I would have I would have bet that uh, one of them lacks grease. Anyway, here's what I was going to show you. If you're going to reuse this caliper, um, and when it sits in the car, it's like that. So before you squeeze it with a clamp and put new pad on it. Loosen up your bleeder valve so all the old fluid that's in the caliper comes out here. You don't want to push it back in the line. That that debris that's in there, that dirt and grime that's accumulated, it, it it'll accumulate up in the the cylinder here of your of your caliper. So loosen the bleeder and then use your clamp with the old pad on the piston and squeeze it together pushing the fluid out of your bleeder valve instead of back up the hose. That'll save your anti-lock brake system and it'll save your system from having that dirt in it. You want it to come out of the system, not put it back in there. So if you were using the caliper. That's the end of the brake install. I still need to bleed the brakes. And I'll go into that in minute detail in another video. I'll link to that in the description.